Hey everyone, welcome back to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert. Happy Friday. Um, I didn't get a lot of reading accomplished this last week. Obviously, everybody's struggling with all, all of the restrictions and the changes to our lives that have come about as a result of the coronavirus. Uh, but for me, it was mostly I got distracted because we changed from the octafinals to the quarterfinals for the Book Two Prize, and that was a busy several days for me. And um, I've just been a little bit distracted, so I haven't read quite as much this week. In fact, I've only finished one book this week, um, although I've been reading three books. The one I finished is a title from my backlist project, uh, Carlos Fuente's 1962 novel, The Death of Artemio Cruz. I had never read anything by Fuentes before, and this was recommended as one of his two best books. Uh, and I have to admit, I did not like it from the start, um, and it did not get any better for me. It's got a great premise. The premise is that Artemio Cruz is 71 years old and he's on his deathbed. He's been a very powerful figure in the Mexican um, military struggles, business struggles, political struggles. He's just been a big deal. And he is remembering in fragments important parts of his life before he dies, which I think is a terrific premise. The problem is, is that unless you have an extensive knowledge of Mexico's history, a lot of the references that he makes in these little fragments are not going to mean anything to you. Uh, he doesn't explain them. He, do, he gives everything without context. And a lot of the names of the people in his life at various stages, he does not explain either. And so you, everything is fragmentary in this, in this narrative. And a lot of the, the writing is kind of philosophical and it just, it just did not click with me. A lot of people have absolutely loved this book, but I didn't have whatever was necessary to engage with this book fully. And so it was a really bad reading experience for me, unfortunately. And it makes me not want to pick up any of his other books that I have currently listed on my backlist project. I may give one more a shot, I'm not sure but I'm going to be quicker with the DNF trigger on the next one if it's like this one for me. Um, so if you know a lot about Mexico's history, you may want to give this one a try. It may mean more to you than it did to me. Uh, but it, to me, it's, it's sad because I thought the premise was so wonderful and I was really excited about that premise. In fact, it makes me want to write a book in a similar vein, but not make it so obscure. Um, this was just too obscure for me. So that didn't go well. And that's the only book I finished this week. Uh, I have nearly finished two other books that I will finish this weekend. Uh, the first of those is Solitary by Albert Wood Fox. This is one of the nonfiction books in the quarterfinals for the Book Two Prize. It is the story of Wood Fox's 40 years, essentially, in solitary confinement, in isolation, in prison for a murder he did not commit and almost everybody knows he does not commit um and it's 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 a very frustrating heart-wrenching story about what the criminal justice system especially the criminal justice system in louisiana and the south can be like and how racially corrupt it is and just how morally bankrupt the whole system is the book is a little bit repetitive though. It's, it's considerably longer than it needed to be. He goes into the legal detailings of all the various appeals and goes back through every single detail of the cases again and again and again, which are important during his appeals, but they're not necessarily important for the reader of this particular book. And so it loses a lot of its emotional impact that way. But nevertheless, it's a hugely important book to read uh, just because of how awful, how truly awful our prison system can be. The other one that I am nearly finished with, I will also finish this weekend, is, is also a nonfiction work in the quarterfinals for the Book Two Prize, and that is Patrick 
Radden Keefe's Say Nothing, which is about the troubles in Northern Ireland in the late 1960s and then for three decades. Uh, it starts off as the story of a specific kidnapping, a woman who uh, is disappeared, one of the 16 people that were later identified as having been disappeared by the IRA. The IRA was pretty um, quick to execute anybody who was seen as a traitor, but most of their executions were um, dumped on the roads for people as a lesson. But some 16 people were just disappeared. They were killed and their bodies were buried or disposed of in ways that weren't public. And the story that we have starts with one of those women who was kidnapped and uh, disappeared. But the book is primarily a history of the three decade struggle that we now call the Troubles in Northern Ireland. I knew a little bit about the history, having read a lot of uh, UK literature over the years, but I'd never read an actual history of the Troubles and I didn't really understand going in all the different ramifications. One of the things that I get from this book is just how many different actors and groups were involved that complicated this process. Uh, and so it's, it's a history of the Troubles. It's the story of the split in the IRA between the original, what they call the officials, and the provisional IRA that became the more militant um, arm of the IRA. And then you have the growth of the political arm of the IRA, the Sinn Féin party, which was led by Jerry Adams, who disavowed his role in the provisional IRA once he got into politics, which of course is a complete fabrication. He was very much involved in, in the provost. Um, it's also the story of a couple of the major figures in that, in that organization. And it's, it's fascinating. Again, like with Solitary, there's an awful lot of detail in there. Some of it may be more than I needed to know, uh, but it's a history now that I at least understand a little bit better than I ever have in the past. I still don't understand all the complexities of what was going on, but at least I have a good overview now that I didn't have before. So that's another one I'll finish this weekend. The two books that I'll replace those works with uh, are two more nonfiction works from the Book Two Prize, uh, Chanel Miller's memoir, Know My Name, and Ibram X. Kendi's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. I will pick them up when I finish the two that I'm working on now. Uh, the novel that I'm currently reading, I just started yesterday, so I'll be reading this for a full week, and that's Patsy by Nicole dennis Ben, also a quarter finalist uh, for the Book Two Prize. My goal is to try to read the remaining books that are still involved in the Book Two Prize quarterfinals that I haven't read by the end of this round, and I can do that. It's till the end of May. And then once I've read all of those, I'll go back and start picking up the ones that got eliminated in the first round that I have not read. So I'll still end up reading all 96 books by the end of the prize in the first weekend of October. But my goal right now is to read all of the books that are still involved in the prize. Um, I don't have a lot else to report to you. Um, so I wanted to tell you about a couple of resources that have either been pointed out to me by various watchers of my channel or by people who have emailed me. The first thing is I made, because not so much BookTube, well, maybe BookTube too, but BookTube and Instagram are just uh, fanatical about bingo cards. I made BookTube prize bingo cards for the nonfiction and the fiction quarter finalists. If you'd like a copy of those bingo cards, you can download them from the Book Two Prize website, and I'll put a link in the description box just for you to play along. Um, but as far as classical music goes, I will list all the works that I listened to this week. I listened to a lot of music this week, but I'm not going to feature any of the works because what I want to do is tell you about a resource that's available to you now. The Berlin Philharmonic has an amazing archive of videos of their live concerts over the years. And we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of concerts. Um, some of them were live streamed. Some of them were just recorded and put in the archive. And it's normally a subscription service, but because of the virus and everybody's being on lockdown, the Berlin Philharmonic has made their archive 
free for 30 days for anybody who registers for the site. You don't have to give them a credit card. You don't have any obligation at the end of 30 days. You just register, you get you know your, your password and everything, and then you have 30 days access to the site. At the end of the 30 days, I'm sure they'll send you an email asking you if you want to subscribe. But for 30 days, you can go watch and listen to some of the most amazing performances ever. So I went down a rabbit hole last night, the night before, watching performances until way too late in the morning. Uh, another, another uh, resource that might be really important to those of you who are judging this round of the Book Two Prize and are struggling to get copies of books because your libraries are closed, Kindle Unlimited, which is like their Netflix version for eBooks, is offering a 30-day free trial where you can have access to any book in the Kindle website uh, for free. And so you can get all your BookTube prize books that way. Their normal fee, and I'm not a Kindle Unlimited subscriber because I don't read eBooks too often. It gives me tremendous headaches. But um, their normal access is, I think, $10 a month for anything that's that's published in the Kindle universe. So for those of you judging and struggling to find find books, you can get them for 30 days on the Kindle uh, Unlimited website. And then Scribd is another book resource that does both ebooks and audiobooks. Uh, they don't have everything, but they do have a lot. They're also offering a 30-day free trial, and their normal monthly rates, I believe, are $9 a month here in the United States. Uh, for access to their website. So those are some resources that you might wanna check out while you're trying to fill your time at home um, be between washing your hands. Um, the only other thing I will mention to you is that by the time you watch this, I may have hit 2,000 subscribers or I may have lost another 10 or 15, who knows? I think when I filmed this, I was one short of 2,000, so hopefully I'll, I'll get there by the end of the week. I am doing a separate video for a 2,000 subscriber giveaway. I have uh, a number of books that I'm, I'm willing to give away. Uh, they're all brand new, they're all hardcover, they're not ARCs, they're finished copies. Uh, so look out for that video and it'll explain how to enter and what the books are. Okay, so that's all I'm up to right now. Um, I'm gonna close this and go film the giveaway video so I can put them both up today. And I hope you have a great week. Um, please follow along with us on the Book Two Prize. The announcement for the results and the pairings for the next round are on the Book Two Prize web, uh, YouTube channel now, so you can go check that out. There's a link to that in the description box. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.